welcome everyone to the uh, University of Bristol's webinar today. Uh, my name is Matteo Beccaria, I work at the International Office and I'm responsible for South Saharan Africa and uh, India and I would like to talk you through our updates uh, following the COVID-19, well following coming through the COVID-19 pandemic and what we've been doing as a result of it. Um, obviously, if you have any questions, as Alicia said, please don't hesitate to put them in the chat and I'll answer them as best I can. Anything I can't answer immediately, then I'll be um, happy to get back to you in writing about or point you towards the relevant pages on our website. So first of all, um, if you go to bristol.ac.uk forward slash students and then coronavirus, then that is the, that is the font of all the updates that we have at the moment. Uh, as you uh, can imagine we're working from our own homes and uh, obviously it is a very unsettling time and um, you no doubt have plenty of questions about this so I'm hoping to answer a few of them today. First of all, term will start on the 5th of October 2020 and teaching will start in this week. Um, we understand obviously that universities and schools are closed around the world so we are um, trying to be as flexible as we can in terms of uh, provision of documents, in terms of references and certificates, we understand that there are going to be delays, that there are certain exams around the world that are going that are being cancelled and so obviously we're working very hard to um, understand the individualities of uh, every country and every student as it were and obviously make accommodations for these exceptional circumstances. Um, so in terms of what will be happening on campus and teaching, we how we deliver our courses will depend on the government guidance on social distancing at the time. Uh, we are preparing for the different scenarios that there may be in place, and uh, we have we will uh, provide a solution that essentially allows us to scale up or scale down the amount of uh, the amount of face-to-face -face contact that students have with uh, other students with. Uh, and both in terms of lectures, obviously the kind of traditional large lecture theatre uh, lectures are going to be the last thing that comes back uh, because obviously getting 300 people into a room is uh, the last thing that we want to be doing right now. Um, but we are making, we are, we obviously have lecture capture devices so the, the large lectures will primarily be developed, delivered online but what we plan to do as well is to have um, the kind of bubbles of, uh, of learning. So obviously there's a personal tutor that is assigned to every, to every student at Bristol University. And we're aware that there is a lot of uh, importance and value attached to that side of the learning. So we are trying to keep that uh, element of the learning, the kind of peer review uh, with, your, with your peers who are studying the same courses as you, available as much as possible. So, Yes, as we said, we are we do teach a lot of courses in small small groups, so seminars and lab classes, as well as the tutorials, and we will seek to continue to teach these in person. Uh, but obviously, while following the national safety guides about this, and supervision for research projects will continue in person or online as appropriate. Uh, in terms of distancing, we are in implementing something across our campus and obviously your safety and well-being is our priority. As part of our approach we will use dedicated entrances and exits along with one-way systems, queues and distance markers combined with other safety measures like hand sanitizing stations. Our buildings will be cleaned and disinfected regularly and additional hand washing and sanitizing facilities will be provided. And obviously we will follow government guidance between now and the proposed physical reopening of our campuses. Any action we take will be with your safety in mind. So as well as this, then a number of you may, may be considering deferrals, maybe a few of you, maybe none. Um, we do understand obviously that some people will be considering this. So there are, there are additional, there is, there are additional uh, bits of information on our website about deferrals. Courses are currently considering deferrals and uh, there is additional guidance about that's available for, for you. We also understand that obviously because of uh, UK VI regulations, there may, be, uh, there may be additional support documents that will be asked, you may be asked to provide. So obviously if you have any questions about conditions related to your offer, about 
documents that we've asked you to provide, then please don't hesitate to contact us. And the, the email is uh, international-office at bristol.esc.uk or the, um, obviously the person, the person who's contacted you, it might be from our visa team or, or whatnot. In terms of the wider picture of what we're doing in the fight against the global pandemic, uh, you'll be proud to know that the, the university is at the forefront of the fight against uh, the pandemic. So both at local, national and uh, global level, our researchers are at the forefront of uh, the progress that we're making against the disease. We do have a, uh, we've also um, led, uh, we've created an internship fund. So it's a hundred thousand pounds for local businesses. They have to run a hundred internships for, your, uh, for Bristol University students. And we see this as a win-win. So essentially local businesses get to employ our students and our students get to work experience before they actually graduate. So that's one of the, that's one of the initiatives that we've taken as a result of the uh, as a result of the pandemic. We'd also have a large medical school and a large health faculty. So a number of the teaching staff that we have have uh, returned from fairly, even fairly senior roles at the university to frontline role, roles in hospital to support our national health service in these challenging times. And uh, of course, our chemistry department is making hand sanitizer for uh, local hospitals and businesses. So I'm sure um, many of you do know this. I'm not sure if you can actually see uh, fully the picture, but at the bottom there of the screen, maybe I can show, change this. Nope. Uh, maybe I'll do that. Okay, so there we go. So Bristol's in the bottom uh, left of the UK there. As you can see, it's about an hour and a half from London. Um, I guess further to this, I have a few more slides showcasing Bristol as a whole. And Alicia, would do you think I shall carry on, carry on with that? Would you would you like to kind of pause now, take some more questions about COVID in particular, and well, no one's visas, put maybe any in the the chat box yet. So I think we can carry on because I know some of the students here will be, um, you know, they might be potential applicants. Um, okay, so fantastic. Considering Bristol, so yeah, I think we should. Great, brilliant. Okay, so I'll carry on then. Thank you. Okay, so for those of you who are not fully familiar with Bristol, let me talk you through a few of the details. Um, we were established in 1876. We were the first university in the UK to admit uh, men and women on an equal basis. And for example, Oxford didn't do that until 1910, and for Cambridge, that wasn't even until 1940. So right from the beginning, we uh, were established on a principle of equal uh, equal appreciation and equal academic uh, requirements for people to attend the university, whether male or female. We have over 20,000 undergraduates and 7,000 postgraduates in uh, last year, 1920. Uh, it's a very diverse university, over 100 nationalities, and we're currently building a um, large, uh, large campus called the Temple Quarter, Enterprise Campus, uh, which will be in the center of uh, the city, just near the train station to accommodate the, the growing student numbers that we have. In terms of rankings and reputation, we are a member of the Russell Group. We're, we're ranked in the latest rankings, 58th university worldwide. That was in the QS rankings 2021. We are highly targeted uh, by uh, top UK employers, the fourth most targeted university, and we are fifth in the UK for research. So we really are one of the top universities, not only in the UK, uh, but also in the world. Uh, as one of the things that's most valued from our graduates is their employability. And uh, I will talk about the careers service uh, in, in a later part of my presentation. In terms of how the university is comprised, we are a number of faculties. And then within each faculty, there are a number of schools. So you can really choose from a huge breadth of subjects at the University of Bristol, uh, most of which are global, globally leading in, uh, in the quality of their teaching. So everything from the very large social sciences and law faculty, where uh, that's very popular, so law, business, economics, management, etc. Everything from there to engineering to science. We have some new courses this year which are very interesting, such as data science, MSc, uh, that one's actually already fully fully booked for, for 2021. 
2020, 2020 entry. So we really are keeping up to pace in terms of both the uh, courses that have been that have been very popular over the years and also areas where we see that there's um, emerging emerging interest and developing new offerings there. In terms of the city itself, I, I'm obviously partial because I live here, but uh, but I've chosen to live here. I moved here. I didn't I didn't grow up in Bristol. Bristol itself is incredibly big district. So um, it's very green. It's uh, the it's been voted as the best place to live outside of London. Uh, it's very kind. People will speak to you in the streets and uh, and say hello. And people do care about you know how you are and how 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 you're getting on in Bristol. Um, we are we were the European Green Capital in 2015. It's everything's very close together, so everything's walking distance. And if you cycle, then everything's within 10 or 15 minutes cycling from from everything else. So it really is a lovely place to uh, study, a lovely place to live. It's about 600,000 people in total. So by UK standards, it's still a fairly sizable city. Uh, in fact, it's the largest in the southwest, but everything still feels small and special uh, despite being quite uh, very vibrant and this is obviously a picture of park street and the city center at night and the university here in the kind of top uh, top right area um, this is the most famous kind of landmark of uh, bristol of bristol it's the clifton suspension bridge built by a victorian engineer and it was the longest bridge uh, in its time at uh, at the time of construction and behind there, you can see the hot air, hot air balloons. That's actually from a uh, fiesta that we have uh, once a year called the Bristol Balloon Festival, where hundreds of balloons take off from one area of the city and fly over the city altogether. The city itself is built along, along an ancient harbour. This was an important port that did bring a lot of wealth to Bristol over the years. Um, this year, it's no longer used as a port. It's more of a pleasure harbour. And it's an excellent place to learn how to row, row sail, or even uh, learn how to surf, not, not too far from Bristol. Here are more pictures of Bristol itself. So as you can see, as, as I mentioned, it's a very, very green city. This is the campus. And we, we, say, it, we say campus, but actually it is, um, it is right in the city itself. So it's not a collection of simply university buildings. Every university building is right and right in in the mix with uh other buildings that maybe uh there's a there's an important uh, grammar school that's just near the university there are uh, council buildings there are shops so there are supermarkets it really is um, a question of you you come out of your lectures and you're immediately in the hustle and bustle of bristol city life which the students really do enjoy another couple of photos so they're all fort gardens this is an area where uh, it's around the maths, computer science and physics buildings. Here we have the uh, life sciences building as well, and the sports center and the Senate house. And this is a picture from inside the memorial building. So probably the most iconic building at uh, Bristol University and where the graduation ceremonies happen. So through these, up these stairs and through those main doors, there's a enormous hall where hundreds of people can can gather and uh, that we use for the most uh, uh, ceremonial occasions such as graduation. So I mentioned the career service and employability. Obviously the main one of the main reasons to go to university is then to develop your uh, to develop your career uh, prospects. And as I said that the graduates from Bristol University are some of the most sought after in the UK. Uh, why does that uh, why does that happen? Essentially, obviously the, the we are a very selective university, and the students that come here then do go on to achieve academic excellence and work very hard. So this is this is one of the areas. But one of the others is that obviously the careers service does work very hard at Bristol to help you develop both your uh, CV, your LinkedIn profile and allow a lot of other opportunities to you while you're a student or just after you're a student so that you can really develop your skills. These are some of the employers that do work within the Bristol area. So it's everything from Ernest & Young who do consultancy, tax, uh, accountants, 
accountancy kind of work to over energy you are a renewable energy supplier in fact i think the one of the top three top four energy suppliers now in um in the uk uh who, who specialize and who then do specialize in, in renewable rolls royce who manufacture jet engines and uh, do either high-tech engineering kpmg who obviously are and pwc who are accountant and provide all sorts of uh, services and then again high-tech engineering from VAE to Airbus to engineering with Arup and um, if you recognize the characters in the bottom left they are Wallace and Gromit from Ardman Animation Studios and um, as you may know Bristol is a city full of uh, interesting arts and um, and media and uh, other other really very interesting dynamic companies to that that work here and that thrive in this and this very artistic and uh, but also hard working culture in terms of what the career service offer they offer employer events internships as, as i've already mentioned they offer a, a, a host of online so sources from the app uh, that's available on your phones to career fairs to helping you plan your career getting work experience and uh, helping you get you get you through the recruitment process so as i said they can they can help you work on your cv they can review out your application and interview you through practice appointments and um, not only that they can also provide support in starting your own business so if you're uh, if, if if you're motivated to to do well in in your in your in your working life then obviously there are a, really a host of resources that we can provide to help you Get ahead. This is the website, and uh, my career my career then can be tailored uh, can be tailored to what you want to what you want to get out of it. So, for example, if you're interested in uh, term time jobs, uh, part time jobs as a student, you can select alerts that will tell you when new jobs are coming online, etc. If you're most interested in I don't know, so when a particular employer comes on campus, then you can uh, have alerts for that as well. So it really is a, a very customizable service. Um, not only this, but also once you have graduated from the university, we do support our alumni. So Bristol grad and the career service will be available to you for a full three years after you graduate, uh, wherever you are in the world. Uh, then I'd like to talk a little bit about the support and well being services that we do offer so it's very important to take care of uh, to provide support to our students and take to take care of their well-being of your well-being while you're here so uh, we do offer counseling to students there is the peer mentoring that i that i mentioned before so other people at your level who uh, take care take care of each other i myself work for the international office and so the majority of the support that i provide is to students who are considering coming to Bristol, but obviously we're also just uh, a short email away. So if you don't know who to ask or uh, where to get your information, you're welcome to just email international-office at bristol.ac.uk and we can triage that, uh, we can send that email to the right, uh, to the right area and then they can, they can provide the support that, you're, that, uh, that will help you. As I mentioned, there is a personal tutor for every student here at the university to ensure that you are maximizing the learning from being here at the university. We do have a student health service. So the fantastic thing about that is that because of our large medical school, we uh, have our own hospital trust. Uh, that means our own GP just for students, or our own doctor that's dedicated just to the students. So you, you won't have to wait with the general public to see a doctor. You can just see a doctor that's specific just to students. And finally, we have wellbeing advisors who help you look after your body and mind while studying, and then the residential support centers as well. And finally, the Global Lounge that puts on a number of events, both in terms of welcoming you to the university, in terms of cultural events at the university, in terms of helping you uh, get settled at Bristol and uh, really make the most of your time here. So. It, it really is the it really is a whole 
spectrum of uh, solutions that and uh, and services that will ensure that you are well well catered for when away from home. In terms of scholarships, we do have a million pounds of uh, scholarships that are for 2021 entry. So half of those are for at undergraduate level and half are at postgraduate level. The awards will range from actually it's from 2,500 up to uh, 20,000 pounds, and that's from UG to PG level. And uh, the biggest uh, such fund is called the Think Big Scholarship, and there are further there are further details about that on our website. Uh, one of my favorite things to talk about is the students union and the sports and societies. So um, this is really about maintaining the passion and building on the passion of something you may maybe already enjoy. Is it a sport? You know, do you re are you really into football? Are you really into um, dancing? Do you really like uh, certain hobbies? Do you like baking? Do you like debating? It, you can not only bring your, your passions with you and keep uh, and develop them uh, through uh, both competitive uh, sport practice, both uh, both hobbies, et cetera, at the university, but also this is the perfect opportunity for um, just exploring any other interests that you may have. Are you interested in learning how to play chess? Are you interested in learning, you know, the opportunity of riding a hot air balloon? The world really is your oyster when you go to university. There are, there are over 400 clubs and societies at the student union. There is something for everyone. And if you don't find what, you, um, what you're interested in, you can actually set up a society yourself. So really, this is the opportunity to just, to just try everything and see what, you, what your passions are in life uh, for, this, for the life outside of, let's say, your kind of studies and, and, and work. Uh, so further information for students can be found in our international page. So... Uh, there's the link, so students forward slash new forward slash new international, everything from before you arrive to will you arrive at the university, life in Bristol, once you're here, what can you do, etc. In terms of applying to Bristol, so I'm thinking a few people will be at this stage. In terms of the application dates, these will be for, if we're looking at the 2021 deadline, these were the dates for the 2020 time. So roughly they will be similar for the 2021 um, period. So essentially in early September, you'll be able to submit your application. In the 15th of October, then there will be the deadline for the early uh, courses. So the medicine, the veterinary ones, Oxford and Cambridge and dentistry. And then there's another deadline in the 15th of January. And then there's a further deadline for international applicants, which is usually around the end of June. So the 2021 be found on our website under the key dates section. In terms of entry requirements, this is specified uh, by each course. So yes, so for each course and by each course, uh, you find if you go to our website and you look for the course that you're interested in, so for example, here we have psychology, BSc psychology, you will see on the psychology page, then you scroll down a little bit and it says typical offer for BSc psychology, applicants must meet one of the following. And so if say in the UK or similar, you would be studying A levels, then this would be for psychology, normally an offer would be an entry requirement would be A star and two A's, including a science related subject. Uh, obviously, coming from Kenya, you you may st be studying a different qualification. So if you have questions about entry requirements from Kenya, then please don't hesitate to um, email us about, about those. And do bear with me just a moment. What was it I want to say about this as well? Of course, so the admission statements. So in terms of the in terms of the, the admission statement is something you should get to know very well. So on the course page, so here we're looking at mathematics, for example, if you scroll down to on the course page, you're interested in the admission statement, it will say, here's the, here's the admission statement, for example, for mathematics. You look at that and it opens a PDF document. And within that document, it says everything about the process of decision. Uh, so how, how in fact to apply, 
how we evaluate the decision, how we make the decision on um, whether we offer you a, uh, a place or not. So getting to know the admission statement can be very, very useful in terms of making the best application you can to obviously increase your chances of being, applied, of being offered a place here at Bristol. So I can't stress enough how important it is to find that, find that place for you, find that little link. So the admission statement to the course that you're specifically interested in and getting to know that very well. In terms of the timeline, so obviously it's making an application first, then we review your offer. Your, uh, if then you receive an offer, then you would have to accept the offer and pay the deposit. If you choose to accept the offer and pay the deposit, obviously, um, then you'll be able to, uh, if the offer is conditional, then it would be about getting your results, uh, meeting the conditions um, tied, to your, tied to your offer. Following that stage, then there's a process of applying for accommodation. And we do offer a guarantee of um, an offer of accommodation to every student, to every international student who has um, obviously applied for, for a place at Bristol, been offered a place at Bristol, and uh, who has accepted us as uh, uh, who has uh, who has accepted us as their as their firm choice. So once you've received accommodation, obviously it's up to you then to accept that offer for accommodation. Once that's happened, then you would receive a. CAS once you've become unconditional. So once you've chosen us as your firm choice and you've met your conditions, then you would receive the CAS. Then you can apply for a visa. Following that, obviously, booking travel to Bristol, arranging your arrival in Bristol, meeting and greet with the students and starting your studies. Perhaps this is a little bit too much detail for now, but essentially the the, the basis of this is that a lot of offers will be will have conditions. So essentially, we uh, may make you an offer and say, well, we 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 will offer we're happy to offer you a place at Bristol University, but the condition is that you would have to uh, achieve a certain result in your in your high high school qualifications. So further information about that really is on a case by is on a course by course basis. In terms of visas, there is a wealth of information on the gov.uk uh, website about tier four visas. So most students will need a tier four visa to study in the UK. And I think Alicia, you are going to um, speak a bit more about, about visas, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, possibly. Um, in any case, I, I guess if there are any questions, we can come back to them. Um, there are obviously processing times related to the to relating to the application. So um, there is information about how long the visa processing times are taking, uh, but I guess that that will come later in the process. We do provide a lot of support, and we have a dedicated team of advisors who do support on everything related to visas. So if if in doubt, just search Bristol and visas, and there is a lot of information about the Tier Four visa there. In terms of uh, really good news, and I'm happy to share the graduate immigration route. Uh, the UK government has confirmed that the, the graduate immigration route that they introduced in September 2019 will be valid for this year, as long as you are onshore by, I think it's April the 20th, but it, it, 2021. So um, in any case, it's by, if you're in, onshore at least by the beginning of April 2021, then you will be able to stay and work in the UK at any skill level for two years, provided you successfully complete your UK degree. So further information about that is if you're interested in then pursuing the settlement route along for the UK. So if you're interested in working in the UK for longer than two years after that, it can be a very good idea to, as soon as you've got your first job, then start to look into the settlement route. So the settlement route is once you're already working post um, post university with on this UK post study work visa, then you need to secure a twenty one thousand pound a year job and a sponsorship from an employer. So um, then once you've secured those two things, then you could start the process of the set the um, 
the work visa, which then allows you after five years to apply for settled status within the UK. So a few a few things about accommodation. As I said, you can apply with for accommodation with either conditional offer or an unconditional offer. We do have uh, 30 uh, over 30 uh, accommodation buildings here at the University of Bristol, uh, ranging from shared accommodation, single rooms, double rooms, ensuite, studio apartments, everything from halls of residence to um, private kind of private housing around the, around the city, everything from catered to self-catered, uh, alcohol-free uh, accommodation if you, if, you, if you should so choose, um, etc. So the guarantee that I mentioned is that the guarantee, the, the university guarantee is an offer of accommodation for the first year of all study to international undergraduates. Um, this would be the same for obviously 2021, this refers to 2020 study. You must have firmly accepted your offer of study at Bristol. You must be coming to study at Bristol for the first time. And this is only for students who are unaccompanied. So not for people who are, who are moving to Bristol with uh, dependent family members or spouses. This is a map of the residences that there are around the university. So there's a cluster in the top left of your um, screen, which is North Village. So those are mainly halls of residence. There's about 2000 students that live there. The university campus is this dark blue area here in the kind of center of your map and there and then two more. So East Village is kind of center of town and West Village is Clifton. So um, each each one has its benefits, its pros, and it's like slightly less pros aspects to it. But it really depends what uh, what sort of what sort of thing you like, how much uh, if you if you want the slightly more expensive accommodation, if you want the slightly cheaper accommodation, if you want catered or self catered, if you want to you know be close to this big park here called the Downs, if you want to be in the village that's called Clifton Village, or if you really like to be in the centre of town. So there really are a, a lot of different options here. This is the timeline for this year, so I think we'll probably just skip that. And uh, scholarships. So, as I mentioned, the Think Big scholarships. There are three scholarships of ten thousand pounds per year, and nine scholarships of five thousand pounds per year. There's a Global Economics Undergraduate Scholarship of. Uh, there are four scholarships of five thousand pounds, and the Global Justice Undergraduate Scholarship, which is obviously three scholarships to five thousand and also the Vice Chancellor's Scholarship, which are 20 scholarships at £3,000 each. Um, yes, then there are a variety of subject-specific scholarships, extracurricular scholarships, and um, a, a lot more information can be found just simply, if you just simply search for uh, Bristol University and scholarships, there's a, there's a huge page which lists all of them. And yes, I guess more information about scholarships, but as I, as I mentioned, uh, again, this, can be, this can be found by our website, so it's probably, probably useless me droning on about them right now. And so that's it for me, really. Um, just to end on my favourite picture of the city of Bristol itself, uh, you can see what an important part the harbour and the river play within the city itself, uh, the beautiful architecture and the, the amount of greenery that there is within the city. So. Without further ado, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer the ones I can now. I think there's a couple of questions in the chat box. Thanks. Should I stop sharing my screen? Maybe I'll be able to actually see the chat box. Yeah, okay. I can just see the one from Heta. So just reading it out for everyone. So will there be any concessions made if students who are offer holders are unable to attain their conditional grades as a result of Cambridge and Edexcel grades determining processes? Mm. I'm not sure I fully I fully understand the question there. Heta, are you able to uh, 
our attendees able to speak here? Is it just uh, but is it just panelists? You can unmute your mic and just uh, ask the question if you're able to. Um, practically, if we don't get the grades that we had anticipated, like our predicted grades, um, sure. the university like planning on making concessions for that, like allowing us with like, let's say, A star, A star, C, or like A star, A, B, instead of A star, A, A because of this whole grade determining process, it's a bit uncertain because we haven't sat any exams other than our AES. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, no, that, that does make sense. Um, okay, so the one thing I do know is that we are aware that it is a abnormal situation at the moment, that uh, there are exceptional circumstances to um, obviously the grading process to the way that uh, awarding bodies are awarding uh, marks around the world. There are certain countries that are cancelling final year exams completely and just going on um, the, the predicted, they're awarding based on the predicted grades for students. So I wouldn't be able to obviously um, guarantee or tell you that something something is, is definitely going to happen. I know that we are um, we are considering individuals circumstances we are considering what's happening in terms of individual countries and uh, board processes so um heads of the best thing would probably be if you could leave your contact details with alicia if she doesn't have them already um or myself if you want to send a private message uh, to me via the chat uh, by the chat function and i'll be able to follow up with you in particular or even as uh, after this um, after this chat in, with a particular view on the situation in Kenya. Um, obviously, as I said, I think we will we will consider um, the fact that we'll consider the fact that there are exceptional circumstances, and um, the best the best thing is just to bring bring uh, if if you're aware of certain situations to our attention, and then obviously in 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 writing in particular. I can see Heta, you sent me your email, so that's great. So I'll I'll get back to you after this um, after this call to say to to see what information there are, there is from our admissions department uh, in particular about Kenya. I, I don't know even yet, but I should be able to at least um, at least provide an update with that. So if then you also asked if you have applied for a studio room, do you also have access to a bigger shared kitchen space outside of your studio room? Um, I guess that uh, that depends on the accommodation, uh, which which accommodation in particular that was. Um, do you know which one that is, Heta? Okay. Um, in any case, I'll put the. Okay, so Dean Street works. Okay, so I'll just put the list to the accommodation here in the chat. So essentially, I'm not familiar with Dean Street works myself, but within the um, within the information about Dean Street, then there should it should explain how exactly how the exactly how the accommodation is set out. I'm familiar with the halls of residence where there is uh, it's an individual room. Where you have shared uh, bathroom facilities and then shared kitchen in between six rooms, and then it was a catered. Uh, and then some of those halls have have accommodation, have catering as well. So there are kind of um, food halls uh, in the centre of all the of all the of of the catered accommodation, where there is food, where there is food served. But it's it really it does depend on the accommodation itself. So the best thing would be to look at the accommodation uh, the link. Uh, that I sent about the accommodation pages, and there should be the full the full information there. Or if there's no information there, then at least the contact details of the accommodation team who will be able to answer your question. Um, okay, so Matthew is asking for when will my CAS come? So I think I touched on that earlier. So the CAS would usually arrive after you've met, uh, once you become unconditional. But I can confirm that. I can confirm that in a uh, follow-up to this uh, to this presentation. Uh, okay, so I can't immediately see any further 
questions. Alicia, did you have any questions in particular or are there any, any further questions from anyone on the call right now? So again, if anyone has any, just type them in or you can unmute yourself. But no, I don't have any. You covered all our FAQs in the presentation. Um, Great. So Would yeah. like to ask me anything about living in Bristol? Um, anything at all? Otherwise, we'd probably bring it to a close. So if you do think of anything later, we can always get back in touch. Um, we'll share our email addresses as well. So yeah, I know some things take a little while to sink in. So if you do think of anything later, we're still going to be here. Okay, looks like that's it then. Great. Thank you for hosting well, this. That's great. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you to everyone who joined today. Uh, once again, my name is Matteo Beccaria, and I will share the um, my contact details after after the presentation. Please don't hesitate to to write me to to ask you know serve any questions to ask myself any questions and um, thank you for for joining us. We hope to see you in Bristol soon. All the best.